Hey all, Tom Rain here from Thomas Big Spider. Sorry, it's been a while since I've posted a proper video. Things have been kind of busy at school and I haven't had the extra free time I usually have to do the videos. This happens just about every single year. So those of you that have followed me for a while know this, but we're going to try to keep back up with things. And the shorts have been a nice way to kind of reach out and show what I've been working on or what I've been interested in. So anyway, today we're going to take a look at Orphanacus philippinus with the Philippine tangerine, one of my favorite all-time spiders. I've had these guys, kept these guys in my collection for I think about a decade now. I've bred them before. The two that you're about, one of the ones you're about to see is actually one of the ones I bred my female raised up as a sling. So I've got her, she needs a new home. And then we're going to go ahead and get a little bonus video in where we're going to rehouse one of the other ones as my heater goes on in the background and makes squeaking sounds. So my apologies for that. Anyway, really excited to show these guys off because I love these spiders. And again, I was shocked to find out how long it's been since I raised up the one, the first one we're about to rehouse. And it's going to be neat seeing her settle into her new enclosure. So enough of me talking. Let's take a look at Orphanacus philippinus or the Philippine tangerine. God, that's annoying. All right, so we're about to rehouse one of my Orphanacus philippinus females. These are from the sack that I produced back way back in October 2019. So I couldn't believe these girls are actually four plus years old. The last rehouse we did for this one here was in October 2021. And we put her into this here, which is one of the, I'll put up the dimensions of this afterwards, but I love these. They're the Amazon, what is it, M Design? I came off the Amazon, the M Design shoe boxes. They're about, I always mess up the dimensions, seven by seven and a half by about, I think, 12 or 14 inches. I'll, again, put the dimension up. I love these for juvenile spiders. They give you enough room to put some substrate in so they can do some digging, some room up top for the webbing. But as you can see here, not quite enough room up top. They do make a taller one that I think is about up here, which I got to pick up a couple of because that would be better. Because these are spiders that once they put on some size, they are a fossorial species. They will burrow, but they will also go up a little bit. And I've had them abandon their burrows and start webbing up top. So when you set one up to make sure that you have a calm spider, you want to not only give it room to burrow, but room up top to do some webbing as well. Kind of like Chelobrachy species are the same way. Some of them will, the majority of them will burrow, but some of them will come up and web up on the top of their enclosure. You want to make sure there's room for that webbing. And I'm just going to open this up so Billy can get a shot of her. Gorgeous spiders. Now, a note about, I, this is one of my all time favorite species. I absolutely adore them. I love orange spiders. These guys, as they're, when they're uh, juveniles, the orange on them is super, super bright. It does dull out a bit with age, just like with any brightly colored species. Usually as they put on more years and march on toward maturity, the colors dull just a bit. But as you can see here, still looking beautiful, still looking orange. Love that sleek appearance. I need some more light down there to show it off. It's a gorgeous spider. I absolutely love these guys. So while Billy's going to back up here, I'm going to show you what we're putting her into. This is one of the Exoterra minis. They are 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches or 30.5 centimeters cubed. I'll put the light over here. Now, full disclosure, it's a fake plant. I've been doing some real plants, but within just the past month, I've had several spiders kill the real plants that were in there for quite some time. So I'm just going to put a fake plant in for some coverage. We've got a cork bark round that's buried into the substrate. I've got some green moss here, some leaf litter. What I'm hoping that you'll do is eventually adapt this as a burrow, come out, hide in there, do some digging and web. The substrate is moist. This is a moisture dependent species. You want to keep at least the lower levels of the substrate moist, let it dry out a little bit on top. I've got about probably about five and a half to six inches substrate in the back. And then it kind of comes down to the front here where it's only about three. And what I'm hoping is up top, because there's some space here, we're giving her some room that if she shouldn't adopt to the burrow, she can do some webbing up top. Now the substrate, I went back old school on this one. I didn't have a lot of cocoa fiber left. So basically this is a mix of timberline topsoil. I had some old vermiculite. I put some vermiculite back into it. As I started, I just did a podcast. So my voice is like shot. I add some vermiculite to it and some peat and then moistened it up. The bottom layers are moist. The top layers, I put some drier stuff on there. So hopefully, again, that will encourage her to dig down in. I found that when you're working with fossorial species, if you make the bottom layers moist to start, a little bit drier stuff up top, that allows the spider to kind of dig to the moisture level they need. So if it wants that moisture, it can go down and get it. So now what we're going to do is try to cup this one get her into the new enclosure. She's usually fairly laid back, but I don't know, we'll see. And of course, as always, brought to you by Simply Limeade. I forgot to get the blueberry one. Remind me next time we get the blueberry one to get that, because I actually like the blueberry better than the uh, No, the blueberry is amazing. I love the blueberry. 
But I've been trying to drop some weight lately, and this super sugary stuff isn't great, so I don't drink a lot of it. Uh, I should have took that water dish out of there. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, that's a Whoa. Way. She literally was not getting her little foot off of the water dish. Let's get the water dish out of here. Oh, and I should mention, she's going to be getting a water dish, and I got it's. she's not going to be getting a little one. It's going to be a larger ceramic one. Because, again, you want to make sure you give them the ability to seek out water as needed. Huge proponent of the water dishes. I'm just going to walk her right over. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. You can't escape. <laughs> Um, she's playing dead. Yeah. <laughs> I have not seen that. What, what spider did that? If anybody watches my videos and knows there was one where the spider kind of played dead. It's like the cutest thing ever. All right. So there she is in there. I have to say these guys have a very bad reputation for being particularly ornery. I haven't had a lot of issues with them. My original two females, every once in a while, if you startle one, it would bolt around. But they'd, they'd rather bolt and hide usually than stand their ground. But even when they set up like this one did here right on the surface, I haven't really had any issues of threat posturing. All right, so what we're going to do is try to get her to go underneath. Honey, I need that back. Sweetie, there we go. All right, so let me back off for a minute. Is she coming out or do you need me? Oh. Where do you need me? Oh, actually, it's perfect. So there she stunning spiders. I absolutely love these guys as she goes for a little walkabout. Hopefully she doesn't bolt, although I do have the cover sitting right here ready to roll. And their sister, I have her sister, is also going to get rehoused into one of these. I'm probably not going to show that one only because every house so many of these guys but her sister is just as laid back as she is which has been a dream because obviously that enclosure now looking at her she's probably pushing stretched out maybe five inches a little gangly so i think it's kind of misleading i don't think she is as big as she actually is but in that enclosure that was a little tight for her and even in that tight enclosure with the webbing that would sometimes get pulled out when I'd open it. I had no problems. I've never gotten a threat posture she just sits here when I drop prey in she's ravenously goes after the prey she's been amazing you want to go over the top and see if you can get. So what's to say about these guys with little babies? I did a whole video, husbandry video, a featured, I think it was a featured species, Orphanacus philippinus. So you can get all the information you need in there. I will also at the end of this, when I do my little thing at the end, put up some of the other O. philippinus videos, including the original or the last rehousing of her. But I found them to be rather easy to grow up overall. Yes, you need moist substrate, but they grow fairly quickly. They start very teeny tiny as slings, probably, I don't know, a third of an inch. They were small. And they take a little while to reach a decent size, like an inch and a half. Usually an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters is where they start getting that orange color in. And boy, is it vibrant. And then again, as they get older, that color will fade a little bit. My two females before they passed away were, it, it was orange, but it was also kind of a tannish orange, but still stunning spiders nonetheless. Very sleek, just amazing. So for folks who like orange spiders, for folks who like fossorials, the one thing I will say about these guys is I've now raised... Let's see, I had the mature male, two mature females, these females that are now mature, and I have another one I'm raising up. They are very, very visible for supposedly fossorial spiders. And I think that's important to note because I've had folks say, you know, I'd love to get it, but I want to be able to see it. I see mine out all of the time. Again, all of them at some point or another have abandoned their burrows. My two original females had big containers that they could burrow in like six inches of substrate. Both of them ended up closing up their burrows at one point, and they just ended up living on the surface and doing some webbing. And at that point, I caught them out all the time. And actually, that's when I finally got a threat posture for one because I dropped the cricket in and it bounced off it and the spider threw up the, the front legs. But besides that, they've been fairly laid back. You just need to give them room. Give them room. The key to these guys, like I said earlier, give them the room they need to burrow. That makes it easier to keep that moisture level up too when you're adding moisture because there's a little more extra dirt in there to hold it in. And then give them some room on the surface so that they can do webbing and you will have a happy spider that you will probably see quite a bit. So there we go. Orphanacus. 
Philippinus, one of my all-time favorite species, probably top three or four. I don't know. They all do. I hate to name any one as my favorite species, but I absolutely adore these guys. I will always have one in my collection. I love hearing when other people pick them up because they saw them in my videos. And we're going to do a bonus rehousing here because I have another Orphanagus Philippinus that I got as a freebie a little while back that has definitely outgrown this enclosure here. And basically what happened was she had burrowed down recently. The burrow kind of collapsed. She's been sitting out up top, so we want to get her into something bigger. So what better to put her into than the same exact enclosure we just took the other one out of? We're kind of doing a, we're getting one out and putting the other one in. So I did something I normally don't do all that often. Usually if I take a spider out of enclosure, I completely redo the entire enclosure. I dump all the substrate and back, but she honestly didn't, the other one didn't do a lot of burrowing in here. The inside of this was completely fine. She had filled it in. I basically took the whole top layer off, cleaned out the sides, washed everything down real good, put another layer of soil on top of it. And we're kind of keeping things as they are, put more of the leaf litter in there. But considering it's the same species, there wasn't a big mess in the enclosure. Obviously, all the webbing's gone. I did clean it, the actual container out really good. We're just going to put her in here. And I think I did this one other time. I want to say it was with a, it might have been with a grandma stole poker peas. It was something that really didn't make a mess of its enclosure at all. And I have mounds of dirt outside that of all the stuff that I've dumped out. As a matter of fact, in our old house, we have mounds of dirt that we left behind, which I can't wait till they go digging in that because there's bolts and stuff. They're going to wonder what the heck we were doing there because we did not make it apparent that we had tarantulas. So uh, I'm sure at some point they're going to go, let's move this mound of dirt and find a bunch of like tarantula parts and freak the <laughs> heck out. I wish I could be there to see it. So what we're going to do, here's this one in here. Billy wants to get a shot of it. And we got a shot of the other one earlier. Obviously, this one's showing some of that beautiful tangerine orange. I absolutely love the coloration of these guys. And as I've stated many, many, many times before, I love orange spiders. And I particularly love the Orphanacus. Philippines. Now I should probably get this water dish out of here because this thing's going to go. This is supposed to be a quick one, so I'm guessing this is not going to be a quick one. <laughs> Boop. Boop. <clears throat> and that's a beautiful color. I absolutely love the look of these. It's so bright orange. We may be able to just lift. I wonder if I can lift the whole thing out. Let's clean this out a little bit. So I had this tendency of putting the leaf litter in which is not cheap, by the way, if you buy the clean leaf litter offline. Like for dead plant leaves, everybody breaks up every year. You can go get outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just afraid. Well, God only knows what's been sprayed out there or whatever. But um, I, I would sometimes take the dirt, put it on top of the leaf litter, and then we lose the leaf litter. Um, continuing with our Work Smarter, Not Harder series of videos. There we go. Now we'll give her a little spot the web too. I'll probably flatten that out a little bit afterwards. And this one did just molt. So for folks, I've had this thing lately and I just did a podcast on whether or not tarantulas can be overfed and what a, you know, a healthy tarantula should look like and how I think sometimes we kind of overdo it. And I, the reason why I did that is I've had several videos I posted up of spiders that just molted and people come on and go, you're starving your spiders, you need to feed them, which is so irritating because I <laughs> do not starve my spiders and you try to correct them and they get snarky. So this one here did just molt, hence why the abdomen is smaller than the carapace, a lot smaller than the carapace. And again, this is a old world species. So the abdomens on old world species tend to be more elongated and thinner and they don't puff up like new world species do. So I've had ones that are perfectly healthy old world species. People are used to seeing the super fat Rocky Pelmas species, a fauna Pelmas, be a fauna Pelmas real. We got Nicki Minaj for the big booty. They get really, really fat. These guys don't get nearly as fat. So I think they see that and think Tom Moran is starving his tarantulas, which couldn't be further from the truth. I am trying to Put mine on a, a healthier diet nowadays, more because I think I was kind of overfeeding some of them. It behooves me to get them from sling stage to adult stage as quickly as possible so I can talk about the care because I don't like talking about the care of something that I haven't raised up. But I've been slowing all that down. Now we've been doing this for 10 years. No need to rush. We'll take our time and they'll get big when they get big. So there we go. Orphanacus Philippinus. And if Billy just wants to back out, I'll just show up. I know I already did this with the last video, but what we have here. Cork bark hide. I'm hoping she ends up in there, but the last couple of guys I've rehoused in these did not use the burrow. They kind of webbed out around here. We'll see what she does. The other one that we just rehoused actually went in the back corner under the plant because this is a week after we filmed that one and webbed up around there. But we have some green sphagnum moss. We have some leaf litter. The substrate, I believe, in this one is a mix of peat, 
cocoa fiber and shredded New Zealand sphagnum moss, which I make myself because I'm kind of tired of spending oodles of money on really premium substrate only to end up throwing it out after a couple months when I rehouse. So there we go. Bonus one, Orphanacus philippinus, the Philippine tangerine, one of the most gorgeous spiders in the world, in my opinion. And a lot of people have been, a lot of people have been picking these up and saying how pretty they are. So as I mentioned earlier, the first spider is settled in nicely. She actually webbed up around the plant that I put in the back. And I would have loved to have put real plants in this enclosure, but I've had a terrible time with the spiders tearing them out recently. So originally it was going to be a real plant, but I had several plants killed within the last month. The spiders that had been in with the plants for quite some time, they just decided, hey, I don't want this here anymore and ripped them apart. So we're going to spare it and just put the plastic one in. And it worked out because it gave them something to web to. And now she's got her little hide, web hide on the surface. I will be curious to see if this one goes down beneath. And as for the other one, the second one I rehoused, she actually went into the cork bark hide and it started webbing up in there. So hopefully she'll use that as her home base as she hunts. But we'll see. I've raised these guys quite a few times. And what I've always found is that they seem to hit a point where they abandon their burrows and kind of hang around the surface a little more once they put on some size. We'll just have to see how it goes. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate Click the little circle up in there. I'm going to put my husbandry video over here, maybe another one featuring the female I just rehoused down here. If you take the time to comment, I'll take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a couple days because I get busy and I tend to get a few comments. Guys, stay safe. Catch you all next time.